Wonderland with a walkthrough video of my altered box using Lindy Stamp Gang sprays, some Crafters Workshop stencils and a few other Prima goodies that are in here as well. If you're at Sins this year, you would have seen that this original box um, I created for our giveaways and so after a lot of requests I finally made a similar box so you guys can take a look at the process. Here's a couple of stills of the box and so this is the original one so we'll be making a smaller one today. There's some gorgeous gorgeous sprays in here. That butterfly is actually just a chipwood piece that I ran through an embossing folder. So let's get started. What I've got here is just a box from my dollar store. Uh, I've kind of had a little bit of a play with how I want it to look in the end. Now the first thing you need to do is you need to prep your box. I've taken um, some Faber-Castell gesso and it's just going to give it a nice white background. It's going to give it some tooth so the sprays can stick to and it's also great um, if you've got a box like mine that's a bit of a different colour uh, just to give it a good base. So here we are all finished. I wouldn't want you to sit through all of that. Now I'm taking some Crafters Workshop stencils uh, and apparently I'm going to go in with some cheesecloth first just to give it a little bit of a texture. And I'm using the Ranger Matte Medium here to adhere things down. So these are the new um, Prima Doily dies. They came out in the last release and I just cut them out of some um, scrap Prima paper that I had and it's just stunning. I love how detailed this um, die cut really is. It doesn't matter about the color of your um, dies because you're going to cover everything over with gesso again so it doesn't matter about your die cuts. And here I'm still using some of the medium to add some cheesecloth and I love the texture this gives. Right, so now I'm taking my Crafters Workshop and my Faber-Castell Whip Spackle, if you saw it zooming past there, and I'm literally just using a, um, a palette knife and just smearing it through. It's, it's a really thick consistency, so it's very easy to use, and it do, I find it doesn't slip under the stencils as much as something like, say, Gesso would. going in for a second try here. Now I'm just drawing in between a couple of coats just because I didn't want to smudge anything as I put extra layers on top. I really wanted a textured background because when you get the sprays to go into it, it kind of um, leaks through into all the little crooks and crannies and it's just, it's beautiful and you can really see that texture come out. So there you go and that's just the base. So what I've done is um, sort of the same treatment as I did to the other box. I've got my chipboard pieces here. Uh, the beauty is fab scraps um, and we've got a lot of those in our store at the moment and they're just so stunning um, once they're sprayed up or embossed. Um, I've just um, used some dry embossing through an embossing folder but you can heat emboss. Um, yeah there's really a lot of things you can do with them. Paint them up. Really cool with um, chalkboard paint as well. That piece you can see there, the frame, is a Prima resin and the flowers are all from the one kit of um, Prima and I'll list a um, supply list in my blog because the name of them are, is actually escaping me right now. So I'm 
just using hot glue just to kind of fix everything out. The great thing about this, um, what's it called? <laughs> the great thing about this is you can actually use any color flowers or any color items you wish. They don't need to coordinate because you're going to cover everything with gesso and then use your sprays to get your colors that you want. So it's a really good way of using up leftovers. Uh, I know a lot of the times I buy you know packs of flowers and they've got some random colors that I'm not a fan of or that I don't have papers to match so they kind of end up sitting in my craft room for hmm, ages so this is a really good way of using them up that's another Prima resin there and these are the Prima butterflies I love them so much Those frames are from the stationer's desk I uh, wooden icons, and there's a little Tim Holtz pen that um, went in there as well. That little keyhole you see is a Melissa Francis resin, but I don't think I end up using that in the end. Right, gesso time. This is a quite tedious kind of task, but it's definitely worth it. You have to go over absolutely everything with gesso. And for the sake of time, I've edited it out, but um, yeah, you need to go over everything. It's it's good to use a small brush to kind of get in all the, in the creases and the crevices, but um, yeah, it does take a little while. So you have a cup of tea ready when you do this. dry and gessoed up. So I'm going to go with my Lindy Stamp Gang sprays now. These are such amazing sprays. I love them pieces, especially the Starburst with all the shimmer in them. You can't compare them to anything else. I'll do a full color list at, on the blog, uh, purely for the fact that I use so many colors in here. Um, it's hard to know which one's which. sprays and one does do, uh, sorry three sprays and one of the starburst does have a dauber on it makes it a lot easier for you know full coverage if you want to do tags or you don't want that kind of sprayed look you just need the color otherwise you can do what I did just then um, I used my finger to move the spray around a little bit I'm going to be adding paper on the side so I wasn't too worried about the look of the spray I just needed the color in the background And here's another dauber, so it's really easy to get a lot of color on. I love how the colors work through all the kind of crevices of the whoop spackle that I put on there through the stencils. It just picks everything up and from what you couldn't see before to now is a huge big difference. Now I'm just layering and layering and layering here. If you want to skip to the next step, go to, uh, I think it's 14 minutes and 30 seconds. Otherwise you can sit here and watch me build up color. I was going to edit this out, but I thought people might have questions about how many layers or how many colors I did go in because there is a big difference between now and I guess when I finished layering. That black is uh, Rendezvous Raven, and I love it. It's just the perfect shimmer, and it kind of subtles out if you use it on the gesso. If you use it on something without the gesso, it just it goes completely black. But I kind of like the subtlety that it gets, you know, when you're mix and matching it into this sort of project.
so I wanted things a little bit darker so here's my kind of next layer of darkness and you'll see what I mean um, when I dry it when I do spray it on it's quite heavily you know it's it's quite dark and when it sprays in it just settles into the rest of it And that flower seemed to um, open quite a lot. I think I oversaturated it trying to get it uh, a little bit darker so it did open up a bit. You'll see manipulate it a few times. The others seem to be absolutely fine though so I don't know why that one just didn't really want to play for me. Okay. So like I said I'm going to go over the sides with some Prima time traveler paper anyway uh, so I just wanted the color in the background here now how you dry these sprays will definitely give you a different look if I had spread everything on and left it to dry naturally it would give a thicker kind of flatter appearance where because I'm going in with my heat gun and I'm using my fingers to kind of manipulate the sprays a little bit it's gonna give that look so it just depends on how you want it but I really like the kind of muddled marbly effect that it does give when you do go in with a heat gun but it, again it all depends on the project that you're doing So now I'm going back in with my gesso, uh, just to kind of, I'm dry brushing some on just to kind of hit the relief stuff, uh, and it kind of brings back a little bit more of that detail. When you use your sprays, it kind of blends everything together, and here I just wanted to make a few features pop. So the next thing I'm going to do is take my Viva Decor Inca Gold uh, and I'm just going to kind of buff in with my finger onto some high areas so you can see the dry embossing that I've got on this butterfly. Um, it just picks it up really well. I just kind of wanted to give everything like a little bit of an extra shimmer. This product is really nice. It's a beeswax base. Uh, so, you know, it's not chemically, it doesn't smell. It's, it's really, I mean, I use my fingers. It says to use a dry cloth or whatever you want to kind of buff in. Um, and the more you add and the more you rub it, the more the shine kind of comes out. But I definitely love using my finger for this sort of things because I'm messy like that. So what I'm doing here um, off screen unfortunately is I'm just adding a little bit of a gold to the base of the box as well just kind of on the edges because as I say everything's going to get covered up with paper anyway. Now I just went a little bit crazy on the beauty fab scraps piece there so I'm just settling it down again with gesso and then popping over the top with a little bit of gold. choosing a couple of um, papers that I wanted to add and I'm not a hundred percent sure of the name of the piece that I did use so I'll again put that in the blog post for you 
uh, just so you can see exactly what I'm using. And I'm going in with my uh, Tim Holtz Distress Ink here and my distressing tool and just giving a little bit of extra colour. And this Ingvild Bomb um, Prima Distress Tool, I absolutely love it to pieces. I use it for everything. It's got a, you know, a sander, it's got a distressing uh, blade on it, and it's also got a little wire brush at the end, which I really love to kind of distress the top of the papers. Um, it's really handy to have everything all in one tool, and it makes a lot less mess on your craft desk having one tool instead of, I'd say, three or four that you'd need to add it with. So what I'm doing now is I'm just attaching the papers to the box. I'm using that Ranger Matte Medium again. And I really whizzed through this and it's kind of off screen a little bit because I'm pretty sure everyone knows how to adhere paper to a box. Okay. So now, um, flying by there are the Prima stamps and I'm just taking some stays on ink in black and I'm just adding a little bit of stamping in there just for one more layer and a little bit of interest. These Prima stamps are absolutely gorgeous. I love them. Um, I'm just using them as they are. You, you, I mean you can add them to a block but I find it easier to kind of control when they've got them sitting on my finger. And get them to little areas. Now I was originally bringing these stamps in just for me and um, my husband kind of liked the look of them so he said bring in a few of them and they have just gone flying out the door so if you want a set of these I'd say get in quick because they are going going and soon will be gone. And here's me twiddling with that flower again. So last, what I've done here is I've just added a little bit of um, pearls and a little bit of bling. This is a no-name brand, um, I think it was just from um, my local dollar store or something like that. Um, so you can really use anything, I just liked the kind of peachy kind of colours that went with the box, so that's what I've added in there. And one more shot of hot glue because a couple of things lifted while I was spraying and there she is um I kind of whipped through this a little bit fast so there is pictures at the end of this post <laughs> and you can see my hands there and what I've done here is um here's the wee box that I've been making and zooming out you can see my messy table and this was the original box that we had at send so you can kind of see the difference um the one that I made today was definitely, you know, I wanted it to be a smaller, subtler version, just so you could kind of see the process. There's a lot more flowers and things going on in my bigger box, but I kind of wanted to use this on my dressing table or something, so I wanted it to be a little bit subtler. here she is so thanks for sticking with me through this um, video tutorial and let me know what you think in your comments and you can find all of our details at our blog paperwonderland.co.nz thanks so much